Great. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Gibbs, and I'm the Chief Program Officer for Climate here at CLASP. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar on the Indian model of energy efficiency, cooling policy development. I'm very excited about this topic and I'm looking forward to moderating what will be an informative and engaging virtual event. Just a little housekeeping announcement before we get started. Throughout the presentation, everyone will automatically be on mute except the speakers. However, your active engagement is important throughout the session, and we encourage you to submit questions by typing them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We have a dedicated Q&A session at the conclusion of the panel presentations, and we'll get to as many of your inquiries as possible. If we are unable to take up your questions during the session, we will respond to them separately after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded, and you will receive an email with a link to it following the event. This virtual event features a number of esteemed speakers, including my colleague and class CEO, Christine Egan, the Director General of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Mr. Abe Bakre, the Director of the Standards and Labeling Program, Mr. Samir Pandita, and the leader of the Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Manufacturers Association, Mr. J. M. Bambure. I'm very pleased to see that we have a very diverse audience that is participating in this virtual event including policymakers from India and countries throughout Southeast Asia, Africa, Europe, and Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as representatives from national and global research and civil society organizations, trade associations, and industry. At this time, I'd like to invite my colleague and class CEO, Christine Egan, to provide the welcome address. Christine, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Eric, um, I really appreciate the introduction. Um, I appreciate uh, very much to be able to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Um, I'm grateful that y'all have chosen to spend your time with us today. Um, I'm Christine Egan, and I am, as you've been told, the CEO of CLASP. Um, and you are participating in a webinar on the Indian model of energy efficiency cooling policy um, and development. This is obviously an unusual and very challenging time for everyone. So the first thing I want to make sure is that I let everyone know that I hope you are all safe and well and um, sane and engaged uh, and glad to see you participating in, in your work and your community and, and this webinar at this time. Of course, uh, what I really need to emphasize is congratulations to BEE. Uh, despite all that is going on, they are leading the fight against climate change in these tough times. Uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency has demonstrated leadership in energy efficiency through various initiatives. And of course, particularly near and dear to my heart uh, is the Appliance Energy Efficiency Standards and Labeling Program. Um, we as CLASP have been in partnership with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and supporting this work since it very inception. Actually, uh, my first trip ever as the CEO of CLASP was to India uh, way back in 2002. Um, and over the last two decades, it has been um, amazing and impressive uh, and really just gratifying to see how long, uh, how long and how far the program has come and the tremendous results that we've seen in terms of greenhouse gas savings, the scope and depth of BEE's program um, is extensive and it is exemplary. Um, it's high valued by the stakeholders and it's at a global example um, for its consultative approach uh, and for the breadth and stringency and ambition uh, that we're seeing uh, increasingly more and more as the program grows and expands. Uh, so I'm hoping folks have a lot that they can learn. Meeting energy demand from space cooling is obviously one of the major challenges of our time um, and the various policies that BEE has formulated in this regard um, are uh, models that I hope to teach and learn a lot about in this discussion. 
Um, it obviously would not uh, be possible without the leadership of Mr. Abe Bakre, the DG, and his team, Samir Pandita, and I am extremely grateful to be able to turn the floor over to um, the DG, sir, so that way uh, we can start this discussion. And I do hope uh, that you are inspired and you are informed. Um, and with that, I would like to request that Mr. Bakre address the audience. Thank you all so much. Mr. Bakre, the floor is yours. So I understand that we've had a technical issue with the connection from India, actually. Uh, and I do apologize for that. Um, to the team at CLASP. Mr. Bakre is here. He's back. Great. That's wonderful. Mr. Bakre, the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, sorry, there was a gap in my connection, so. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. So I'll try to keep the uh, video uh, off so that uh, uh, my bandwidth is uh, good. So thank you, Christine, and uh, thank you, Eric, for uh, your opening remarks. Yes, truly the, the standards and labeling program, uh, I should say one of the most successful program uh, as far as the B is concerned. The different policies we have tried of uh, in last uh, 15 years uh, or so, the most successful has been the standards and labeling program. So let me first welcome uh, every uh, delegate, every participant in this webinar. And uh, let me also compliment uh, CLASP uh, for not only organizing this webinar and also uh, connecting uh, all the stakeholders from time to time as well as uh, in today's uh, panel. Cooling as such has been the, uh, the, the most important aspect of standards and labeling for many reasons. And uh, why B and uh, even uh, since my joining almost three years back, why we have kept uh, the main focus on the cooling and the standards and labeling program uh, related to the refrigeration, etc., and especially the consumer. As you know, Bureau of Energy Efficiency is the Can you can you hear me again? Hello. You're back. You were breaking up for a moment there, sir. But you do uh, seem to be back now. Let's try to continue. Okay. So Bureau of Energy Efficiency uh, has a mandate for energy efficiency programs, especially on the demand side. While we have the power ministry uh, doing all the uh, efforts and policies uh, to make sure that the supply side, uh, whether it is from coal or uh, gas or from renewables or hydro, they are uh, in good shape. And in the last four to five years, we have come to a electricity surplus uh, nation. Uh, but the demand side is quite of uh, uh, varying nature. We have consumers using uh, coal in industry, uh, the gases in fertilizer and uh, other sectors. So if we see the demand side, the demand side challenges are much different than what we, uh, what we can address on the supply side. Is the partnership from our stakeholders. The partnership from the manufacturer, the consultant, uh, and all the technical institutions 
including policy makers uh, from other departments, whether it's the Ministry of Environment, whether it's Ministry of Power, Ministry of uh, Heavy Industry, or even for the transport sector for that matter, we get uh, a lot of support and that makes uh, Bureau's program much more uh, comprehensive, much more acceptable to the, the tar target group we are making. We, we want to make special recognition of all the technical bodies and especially the, the manufacturers who are supporting this program. Now coming to the, the objectives, what B is trying to uh, put forth and what is the further roadmap. As I was mentioning, uh, the air conditioning and the refrigeration was, uh, was the key to the standards and labeling prog program because this is one appliance which we all know that there is a uh, there is an upfront cost, but at the same time there is a recurring cost. Now, most of the consumers in our country, uh, when they wanted to uh, start purchasing ref refrigerators and then slowly going to the cooling equipment and even much uh, uh, high capacity equipment, uh, they are always having uh, initial uh, uh, apprehension about the cost of electricity bill. So this is a simple uh, uh, challenge uh, starting from the consumer end, from the individual side. But at the same time, we have a large consumer group. Now, in last 20 years, we have witnessed a, a major changes in that. 20 years back or 25 years back, even the most of the banks, especially the nationalized banks, they were not air conditioned. In fact, the policy was that only the uh, senior officials up to a certain level only were uh, entitled for a, a kind of a window AC. Uh, split was not that much common. So the, uh, the situation has changed completely in last 20 years. The banks, work, banks have started uh, becoming complete air conditioned. Uh, that means even the consumer, the customers coming or even the uh, every person in that bank. Now this is a simple example. Uh, talking about the service sector, having the major growth in the service sector, whether it is the banks, whether it is the financial institutions, the healthcare sector, the tourist sector, now all such new offices coming up in large numbers, they require air conditioning for the sake of better performance, for the sake of better comfort for the customer and for all that purpose. If we go to uh, uh, a second channel, which is a kind of an industry. The industry means the commercial buildings or the offices uh, of these industries. If we go to the third uh, third car target group, which are the government buildings, or even if we go to the fourth target group, which is the institutions or even the shopping malls, they were not air conditioned 20 years back in India. But in last 10 years, most of them are coming. Even now the tier two, tier three cities or even small towns, these establishments are coming up with air conditioning. And even if at household level, if we see the growth has been very, very uh, promising, we believe we are yet to cover, we have covered less than 10% of households. As you know, uh, that in India, we have covered now almost every household uh, getting electrified. Now the next thing what he will require will be a kind of a, comfort at his home. He will try to have a good entertainment through TV. He may have a good uh, food through a refrigerator and maybe a comfort through either a cooler or the air conditioners. So that means, uh, yeah, I don't have any slide and uh, sorry for that. Uh, there is a, a comment from someone. Uh, it is that, that I want to make the policy. Now in that case, the Bureau has a very tremendous task of satisfying such variety of consumers. On one hand, there are uh, uh, there are large corporates who are making uh, new buildings, especially the green buildings, uh, most of them, and uh, it's very welcome step. There are uh, government offices coming up, whereas on the private side, there are uh, shopping malls coming up, private institutions, colleges are coming up, and finally, the individual households. All of them, we believe in coming 10 years, will have a, a large push on use of air conditioners. Uh, either they will increase their uh, capacity or they will uh, increase their requirement or most of them who have not used air conditioners.
for the designers the designers have to come up with new solutions which are yeah is it okay now the designers who are uh, who will find new solutions which are energy efficient the solutions which are uh, giving sufficient comfort for the customers Finally, they have to be a cost-effective solution. If all these three these things are met properly, we believe the customers will be in very much uh, need. They will create more and more demand, and there will be a good market. That's why the Bureau of uh, the policies and the, the subsequent uh, refinement and subsequent policies coming up, we will focus on uh, such uh, uh, such target that the consumers get. A much efficient, a much better, a technically better, much comfortable solution at an affordable price. With these objectives, we will be uh, working very hard to make sure that all the partners are with us, uh, all the uh, uh, the manufacturers and think tanks are with us, and we will uh, three objectives so that. Uh, on one hand, we are able to satisfy uh, each and every consumer or customer uh, who will aspire for leading solution in the coming By all the partners, stakeholders, and ministry of other. Uh, finally, there are many other sectors which are. There are many other sectors which are yet to be uh, covered, like cooling, uh, cold chain sector, the transport sector, and uh, especially the <coughs> rural areas, which we want to cover. So all these sectors will provide a great solution for uh, uh, the consumers. Uh, we will provide great solutions to consumers and uh, I hope that with the, the new sectors, I repeat, the sectors like coal chain, transport, in the uh, railways, aviation and uh, sectors they may have more and more uh, demand uh, increasing which are at and they are Will give you This is Christine. Um, obviously, we've had a challenge with the audio, um, and Sir has been in and out. But I think uh, we got the full spectrum of his commitment and enthusiasm for a broad brush um, of highly efficient uh, products across a range of product categories and and with robust partnership. 
Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn the mic back over to Eric Gibbs, um, who will be moderating the session as we move into the next discussions. And I want to offer my gratitude uh, to Mr. Fakhre, sir, for his participation. Likewise, thank you, Christine. Uh, and thank you um, to uh, Mr. Bakre for uh, his remarks and for his leadership and, and contribution to appliance energy efficiency in India. I think uh, that we all know that space cooling is uh, indispensable to health, well being, productivity of people around the world, and that the rapid growth in space cooling is a major driver of energy consumption globally. So the fundamental challenge that uh, India and the world is facing is how to provide access to cooling to everyone without uh, further exacerbating uh, climate change. Um, India's leadership in appliance energy efficiency and particularly policies for cooling and refrigeration have been exemplary and there is a lot to be learned and adopted from India's experience. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our two panelists uh, so that we can benefit from their experience and perspectives on this success story. Our first panelist is Mr. Samir Pandita. Uh, Mr. Pandita is a director with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Ministry of Power, Government of India. In this role, he is responsible for the promotion and implementation of the standards and labeling program to improve the energy efficiency of appliances and equipment sold in India. He has played an instrumental role in the success of the program. Mr. Pandita joined BEE in 2009. He's also been instrumental in implementing energy efficiency programs in buildings, micro and small medium enterprises, large industries such as fertilizers, iron and steel under the performance achieve and trade scheme. Mr. Pandita will be giving an overview of BEE's policies on cooling and refrigeration appliances and highlighting the impact of these policies and transforming the market towards more efficient cooling products. Samir, the floor is now yours. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. And uh, good evening to one and all who has uh, logged into this webinar to listen to uh, this India-centric uh, uh, program webinar on uh, the cooling sector. My name is Samir Pandita, and I am director in charge of standards and labeling program at the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Ministry of Power, Government of India. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, each and every one of you for being here today and uh, class for organizing such a wonderful uh, interactive session uh, with the, the global stakeholders. I hope that uh, all of you are uh, keeping healthy and keeping safe in these very unprecedented times. Uh, in my talk today, I would be largely speaking on the initiatives uh, that have been taken by the government of India to optimize the energy consumption uh, in the cooling energy sector, in the Indian cooling energy sector. Uh, I would uh, largely speak upon uh, the initiatives as far as uh, the standards and labeling program of uh, government of India is concerned. But before I start my talk, I would uh, quickly like you uh, to uh, understand the existing scenario uh, as to why cooling is important for a country like India. Uh, is there a presentation or? Uh, because I cannot see the presentation. Hello. Yeah, next please. Uh, when we talk about India, uh, cooling is a very important aspect for a country like India, which experiences predominantly high, clim uh, high uh, hot and warm climates uh, almost throughout the year. Uh, and therefore cooling is very important uh, from both uh, the economic de development point of view of our economy, uh, as well as from the health and producti productivity of the manpower of our country. Uh, we have a, in India, we have a burgeoning middle income group. And uh, this uh, segment is mammoth. It's a very, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, purchasing power of uh, this uh, income group uh, is uh, gradually increasing and uh, over the years, as our economy has improved, uh, the purchasing capacity of this uh, uh, segment per se has improved. 
uh, presently uh, refrigerant based air conditioning appliances are not being seen by this uh, particular segment as uh, uh, a necessity this is more of a luxury for them given the high upfront cost of the refrigerating uh, uh, re refrigerant based uh, air conditioning appliances uh, as well as the high operational cost of such appliances so most of these uh, households are uh, using ceiling fans and desert coolers to meet their uh, air conditioning or uh, thermal comfort requirements at the moment but as our economy improves uh, these households are expected to uh, invest more and transition towards uh, the room air conditioning or refrigerant based air conditioning appliances uh, as uh, these households are very aspirational and as their uh, purchasing power improves in the years ahead they are expected to invest more on the RACs uh, to meet their cooling requirements. Now, uh, one important aspect uh, in the Indian economy is that uh, we are going to see a huge uh, growth in our uh, infrastructure, about uh, uh, more than 60% of infrastructure, both in the commercial, that is the reality sector, as well as in the residential sector of the country is yet to come up. And uh, accordingly, uh, this would require uh, cooling uh, and uh, our cooling capacities or the demand for cooling is going to increase like anything over the next uh, 10 or 20 years. Uh, so uh, it becomes imperative for our policy makers uh, to devise such policies which is uh, which in fact are able to um, um, allow or enable this cooling demand to be met in an environmentally benign way in a sustainable manner. Next, please. Uh, if IEA figures were to be believed, uh, India at about 70 kilowatt hour uh, per person or per capita of cooling energy consumption is uh, extremely, extremely low compared to the world average of 272. Uh, this itself speaks a lot about what kind of uh, potential for energy optimization and cooling capacity augmentation is available uh, in the country. Next, please. Uh, it is estimated that our cooling energy consumption in terms of million tons of refrigeration that is required over the next 20 years is going to increase by about eight times and the related energy consumption that is required to support this cooling demand is going to increase by 4.5 times if baseline as usual scenario is to be followed. And this cooling demand is almost entirely going to contribute to the peak demand of the country. Next, please. Uh, India has identified that this cooling demand is primarily being, uh, is uh, going to be primarily contributed by uh, the space cooling sector, which includes both the uh, residential as well as the reality, the commercial sector, commercial building sector, uh, by uh, the mobile air conditioning, wherein uh, though the contribution would be less, but uh, this uh, cooling demand would be contributed by the uh, transport fleets that are going to add uh, to the existing fleets over the uh, next 20 years or so. Uh, domestic and commercial refrigeration as in uh, the domestic refrigerators as well as deep freezers and re, um, uh, and uh, visi coolers are going to uh, uh, add to the existing stock and increase the cooling demand one very important thing that uh, and and uh, a stress area for the indian policy makers is cold chain sector uh, government of india is trying to assure a minimum income to the farmers and accordingly, there would be a lot of focus on the cold chain networks in the over over the next decade or so. Uh, presently, we have a limited number of uh, pack houses, reefer vans, as well as cold uh, cold storages in the country. But uh, the numbers are going to go up like anything uh, over the uh, next twenty years or so, uh, even in the next ten years or so, um, if government of India is to meet this. Uh, uh, a target of uh, providing or ensuring a minimum income to its farmers. However, the primary driver for uh, the cooling demand in India is going to be the space cooling sector. Uh, presently, if we consider the year 1718, uh, 
the room air conditioners are forming uh, or contributing the largest chunk of energy consumption uh, of the overall energy consumption pie at about 42 percent and this trend is going to increase by about 10 percent over the next 15 or 20 years uh, but the room air conditioners will still continue to dominate this chunk this pie of energy consumption uh, presently uh, more people are using uh, ceiling fans and uh, coolers to, uh, to meet their energy demand but this trend is also going to uh, change as the purchasing power capacities of the middle income groups improve and as uh, that improves people are going to transition towards uh, uh, refrigeration uh, refrigerant based cooling next please uh, as cooling is a cross sectoral requirement the government of india has taken a cognizance of this and uh, in the year 2018 to be precise September of 2018 government of India has launched a cooling action plan which is a cross uh, sectoral uh, uh, plan document uh, that presents the uh, estimates of the cooling energy demand which would be there after 20 years uh, and uh, what the country would be uh, wanting to meet uh, at the end of uh, 20 years uh, over the baseline year of 2017 and 18. Uh, this uh, cooling uh, uh, policy, India is in fact the leader. Uh, it is amongst the, uh, uh, the first few countries that has launched such a cooling action plan, which lays down the perspectives and recommendations to uh, meet the cooling requirements of our country over uh, the next two decades, as well as gives recommendations to uh, how uh, this cooling demand can be achieved. Uh, in an environmentally benign manner and sustainably through energy efficiency measures by optimizing the energy efficiency or through uh, 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 improved designs, building designs, both in the residential as well as the commercial sector. Next, please. Bureau of Energy Efficiency uh, is having a program, as most of you might be knowing, who have worked with BE might be knowing, uh, that Bureau of Energy has been running a standards and labeling program right from the year 2006, when uh, we had first launched uh, the voluntary program for uh, air conditioners, room air conditioners. Uh, we were established in the year 2001, uh, in 2002, after the ratification of the Energy Conservation Act of the country in the year 2001. Uh, this program has matured over the years, uh, initially beginning with uh, a few uh, refrigerant-based uh, refrigerant appliances like air conditioners, fixed speed air conditioners. We have graduated and uh, we have in fact matured to now include about, uh, now have about 26 appliances under our uh, ambit. Uh, out of which 10 appliances are in the mandatory uh, regime and uh, about uh, 16 of them are in the voluntary regime. We also have an endorsement labeling program. Next, please. Uh, as far as uh, air conditioning appliances are concerned, uh, we launched the first voluntary program in the year 2006. Uh, thereafter, we brought the uh, uh, the cassette and the room uh, air condition, uh, the cassette and the floor mounted air conditioners under the ambit of this program in the year 2011. Thereafter, uh, inverter AC program was uh, launched in the year 2015 under a voluntary mode. Uh, in 2018, we have clubbed together the fixed speed and the voluntary uh, and the inverter AC programs. Uh, we also undertook a ratcheting up or revision of the standards in the year 2019. However, uh, the dates for implementation of uh, these standards have been deferred due to the outbreak of uh, COVID, which has uh, adversely impacted our industry, air conditioning industry in terms of poor sales. Next, please. Uh, this is a, basically a showcase uh, of how we have uh, throughout worked on uh, improving the efficiencies of our fixed and uh, uh, inverter air conditioners. You can see that for split ACs, we have undertaken four revisions since the launch of, of the program or the mandatory transitioning of the program in the year 2009. And uh, for uh, window ACs, we have uh, undertaken about two revisions till date. 
Next, please. Uh, these revisions have enabled the maps for uh, window and split air conditioners, that is star one for our window and split air conditioners to be improved by about uh, 43%. And uh, five star has improved by the efficiency levels have gone up by about 61%. Uh, since the inception of the program, we have been able to uh, save about 60 million tons of carbon emissions on a cumulative basis. Next, please. Uh, the market transformation uh, can be seen here as far as room air conditioners are concerned. Uh, uh, the voluntary inverter program was launched in the year 2015. Till that time, 99% of the market was fixed speed. However, the scenario in the year 2018 has changed drastically. Presently, that 99% has been uh, all uh, about 46% of that uh, stock is presently in the market and rest about um, uh, in excess of 54% uh, uh, of the market is inverter air conditioner market. Next, please. Uh, similar is the case for frost free refrigerators as well. The MEPS for FFR has improved for 15 uh, by, by about 59%, while as for uh, DCR, that is the direct cooled refrigerators, the MEPS has improved by about 49%. Next, please. We have also ratcheted up recently in the year 2019, the standards for ceiling fans based upon continuous requests from the government departments. Initially, we had only one uh, star rating program, but which we have now revised. And now we have two star rating programs for ceiling fans, uh, having sweep size less than 1200 uh, mm, as, uh, uh, as well as for ceiling fans having sweep sizes in excess of 1200 mm till 1500 mm. It was uh, initially planned to make this uh, program mandatory uh, in July of 2020, but due to COVID outbreak, the industry approach, the sales have been impacted. And now uh, this mandatory transition will happen from January 1st of January 2022. Next, please. Uh, some uh, new programs that we have launched uh, these are the details, uh, chiller market, commercial chillers, both air as well as water cooled chillers. Uh, a program has been a star labeling program has been launched. This program uh, presently encompasses about 43 chiller models. This has met with relatively uh, good uh, success as far as uh, our SNL program is concerned. We launched this program in 2018, wanted to transition into mandatory phase by end of 2020. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we could not, but uh, we will after a, uh, a year that is in first of on first of January 2022, uh, we will have this program as a mandatory program. Further, we have also covered uh, for uh, products like uh, deep freezers as well as uh, commercial air conditioners, uh, light commercial air conditioners having capacities between three and five tons uh, under our standards and labeling program and. Uh, we will gradually uh, transition these programs into a mandatory regime. Next, please. How we are promoting uh, the energy efficiency uh, and the energy efficient cooling devices. Uh, this is a brief gist of what all we have been doing. Uh, we have been trying to promote sale of uh, these energy efficient uh, space cooling appliances like room air conditioners uh, by uh, through bulk procurements. Uh, through our uh, distribution, electricity distribution companies. Uh, what uh, this bulk procurement does, it, it helps in scaling down the up high upfront cost of the room air conditioners, making them more affordable for the uh, common masses in the residential sector to uh, procure them. Secondly, we have a very uh, vibrant awareness program, both for the uh, retailers as well as for the masses. Uh, with uh, whom we connect through workshops and uh, social media platforms uh, periodically. Uh, then uh, we are promoting programs like uh, Global Cooling Price, wherein we are uh, hoping to get a technology which is five times less climate, uh, which, which causes a five times less climate impact than a standard uh, room air conditioner. We have government uh, policies 
uh, with our Ministry of Finance issuing directives uh, to ensure that minimum B star rating is ensured while uh, public procurements um, uh, in case of room air conditioners, frost-free refrigerators, water heaters, as well as ceiling fans. And uh, most recently, we have now embarked upon this new concept of utilizing the waste heat that is generated from uh, thermal power plants to meet the cooling uh, cooling needs of our cold chains, townships and commercial establishments which lie in the vicinity of such thermal power plants. Next please. Uh, these are a few equipment that uh, we are planning to cover up in the near future and uh, uh, we will bring all of these pro uh, products under our uh, standards and labeling uh, regime. Uh, Desert Cooler is a fairly matured program which we expect to launch this year. However, for ducted ACs, in, in fact, ducted ACs too is a very uh, uh, matured program and both these products uh, we will be able to cover under the standards and labeling scheme and optimize their performance uh, by, by the end of this year. VRF might take some time, it might take an, a year or so and uh, we are sure to bring that also under the ambit of our standards and labeling scheme. Next, please. So with this, uh, in fact, that's all that I wanted to uh, convey to uh, the stakeholders here. Um, I hope a few stakeholders are able to replicate the success that uh, India has met uh, with its standards and labeling program and uh, can take away a few lessons from uh, our experiences here in India. I again would like to thank each one of you for attending this webinar as well as CLATS for being a uh, a very reliable partner for us for Bureau of Energy Efficiency in its standards and labeling endeavor. Thank you so much. Over to you, Eric. Uh, thank you very much, Samir, for such an informative and insightful presentation. It's truly impressive, both the, uh, the breadth and the depth of uh, the policies that uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency has developed and implemented for all manner of cooling products in India. So uh, congratulations. I'm now pleased to introduce our second panelist. Uh, Mr. Bambure is an experienced cooling industry representative who is presently working as a technology advisor for Blue Star. Mr. Bambure graduated from Mumbai University with a degree in engineering and also a diploma in management studies. He is an executive committee member of the Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Manufacturers Association and chairman of the Ozone Depleting Substances Committee. In this role, he interacts regularly with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, Bureau of Indian Standards, and the Ozone Cell under the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. He is also a member of the United Nation Environment Programs Technology and Economic Assessment Panel and the Refrigerants Technology Options Committee, an, expert, uh, an international expert panel formed by the Ozone Secretariat. He's a founding uh, president of ISHRAE, Mumbai subchapter. Mr. Bambure will be sharing the cooling industry's experience and perspective on product energy efficiency policy today. Mr. Bambure, the floor is yours. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So first of all, I'd like to thank CLASP and uh, to uh, give us an opportunity to share the success of the Indian uh, labeling program, as well as the, the role that the industry played uh, in making this uh, program a big success. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, shift to the next slide? So I'll just uh, cover what was the status uh, pre-energy labeling program, uh, that is before 2009. The actual the discussion started in somewhere in 2006. I was part of the all, most of the meetings there, uh, which uh, when we evolved the program for the first time. So what was the status before 2009? The sale of product was based on brands and claims were not verifiable. So this is a very important statement. The claims were really not verifiable. Uh, the running cost of the AC was a, a, was a big concern and it was a big deterrent for the uh, customers to buy an air conditioner. The production uh, and sale was around 2.1 million. Manufacturer's investment in R&D was low and very few labs met the ISO 17250 standards 
which uh, defines how the lab should work and how should be the accreditation. Window air conditioners, as we know, which are less efficient, where the share of that was around 30%. India didn't have a big manufacturing capacity. Most of the uh, units were imported as the production capacity was limited within India. Though we had uh, multinationals uh, uh, set up their plants within India like Hitachi, uh, um, uh, Daikin, Panasonic, LG, Carrier, um, uh, and uh, uh, Samsung, apart from Indian players like uh, Godrej, Voltas, Blue Star, from which I am there, and a uh, few others. Next slide, please. So how did the journey happen? So a journey, and I, I would like to put it in two phases. The phase one was align, align the products with the energy efficiency program and upgrade it as per the six years program. So when the program was designed between 2010 and 2016, as I said, the energy efficiency was not well understood, the industry was not ready, and we worked very closely with BEE and uh, we decided that we'll have a six, six, uh, approximately a six years period and every two years we'll upgrade the labeling program by which the industry will come to a certain level of competence, manufacturing, designing, and technical. So that is what I call is, as phase one. In phase two, phase two was important because by that time uh, the, uh, the uh, industry was ready to migrate to and adopt the latest technologies that were there. And an important, uh, important transition happened where we migrated from COP to ISCR, a technology agnostic energy efficiency program based on ISO's 16358 standard. To best of our knowledge, a technology agnostic program was first time adopted for the air conditioners in India in the developing countries. It was, it was not that the ISO 16358 was adopted as it is. Uh, the program was modified with a temperature change bin and bin hours as per the India hot and dry climate zones, which is the most severest conditions within India. Uh, to share with you, India has got five, temp uh, five climatic zones out of which one is cold, which will not require cooling, but the rest of them require it. India also considered a, a 24 to 43 degrees centigrade as a range of temperature against 21 to 35 degree, uh, which is recommended in ISO 16358 with 1600 hours as a use per annum. So these were the two big deviations, though we followed ISO 16358. In phase two, we also, uh, to meet the higher star requirements, India specific and India specific designs, uh, could be met only with the inverter technology, larger condensers and evaporators, small diameter tube heat exchangers, and brushless DC motors, which was adopted. Manufacturers today have absorbed the technology and we are at par with the global leaders. Next slide, please. Now, this slide gives uh, a comparison of ISCR, which is an Indian, and ISO standard performance. This, was, this study was done by CLASP uh, along with PricewaterCooper uh, in 17 February, which was a part, this study was done as a part of a development of the program which came in effect from uh, July to mid of 2016 for the inverter. So if you, if you look at, uh, if a same air conditioners, four air conditioners samples were selected and they were tested as per uh, Indian conditions or Indian standards for ISCR working and ISO, which is recommended by the standard. And we can very clearly see here that the, if, we, if, the, if we pick any Indian uh, unit today and test it as per ISO and to arrive at CSPF, it will be about 116 to 120% more efficient. I'm sure this number will be slightly better now. Uh, as we are, uh, as compared to what it was there. So uh, this shows, and this is why this happened because the temperature zones are different in computing the CSPF and ISCR. Next slide, please. Now, how did this market transformation happen and what are the savings? Because this is important as uh, spoken by earlier two speakers, the, uh, the purchase of uh, 
uh, air conditioners was on the last priority and one of the biggest reason was the uh, the running cost of the product so the average cop of an air conditioner before the energy labeling program which was around say 2008 2009 was around 2.3 as per the study that was done that time the present the highest selling category is three star which has got us uh, energy uh, uh, isdr of, uh, of 3.5 the increase in energy efficiency helped in bringing down the running cost, thus increasing the demand as one of the factors. There are multiple factors. Some of them were uh, told by my earlier speakers, but this, because this we feel as an industry was an important factor to buy an air conditioner. We should also remember here that the tariff in India is not uniform. It goes up with the slabs of units consumed per, uh, per month and uh, if we cross a certain units, it impacts the, the, the tariff goes up. So that has also got an impact. Now, market to, has grown from about 2.1 million in 2010 or 2009 to 7.3 million in 2018. Now, 2018 figures are more authentic because all the uh, products, all the manufacturing and sale has to be registered with uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency of the numbers that are and that is the data from B. Uh, one more important thing that happened is window air conditioner share has reduced from uh, reduced to 12 to 14 percent from 30 percent. And as we all know, there are limitations in window air conditioners to achieve energy efficiency. The table below gives what has happened uh, with respect to the 2009, which uh, that there was no star labeling and the COP was uh, 2.3. The units that are consumed again as per the standards we can calculate the units that will be consumed in, as per the bin hours and they were for 2009 there were 1700 units to could have consumed per annum with a three star today it is 1125 which is 34 percent reduction in energy and if we use a five star air conditioner which is 4.5 iscr uh, the uh, units consumed are 875 which is 50 percent more less power energy con saving uh, energy consumption or saving so this has uh, really boosted up the sale uh, of the air conditioners and helped in saving the energy. Next slide, please. Now we should all, we are also we are trying to map here again. This is based on the BE data of how the uh, evolution of uh, the different types of stars has happened. Uh, today, uh, three star is around 75% share of the total sales that happens is a preferred choice of customers followed by five star, which is 12%. One and four star are 2% each and two star is 8%. So that is how the market has shifted. Uh, we feel uh, that the success of energy program is, uh, is uh, very much there because uh, unlike many other countries, what we know, uh, the sale of uh, energy efficient pro products uh, is happening, be it three star or be it five star. And as a, as a result of this, <clears throat> many manufacturers do not offer one, two and four star category to the market because they know that the lower star is not preferred. Now, <clears throat> though the energy efficiency is a preferred, a study is required to understand why five star is reducing because we can see here that a five star has reduced from 20 percent it has come down to about 11 to 12 percent and why it is reducing is to be it requires to be study uh, industry feels that affordability as is an issue we have also seen that there were uh, there was a scheme by eesl which uh, uh, which floated the tenders for higher efficiency but that also couldn't get the required traction Next slide, please. Now, we look at what happened post energy labeling program. The program brought authenticity to the parameters published. India has got a very strong uh, check testing and verify uh, and, and the verification program. And uh, that brought in a, a particular, they brought in a discipline uh, amongst the industry and amongst the, all the manufacturers. Customers got guided choice for selection, experienced the lower running cost, and could relate their buying decisions. So they, they could 
find out what is happening with the decision they took for three star, five star, two star, whatever it is. Manufacturers understood the customer preference, this data is available now, and that helped to plan the design and the marketing strategies. So industry also got benefited. Manufacturers invested in R&D and technology, invested in accredited laboratories, and did set up a manufacturer, manufacturing plants. Now, the most important is the, the sale of three star, which is 75% reflects the maturity of Indian customers as they understood the importance of energy efficiency. Next slide, please. Now, this is the pro, this is, I have not taken all the stars, but I just taken three star and five star because they are relevant uh, in terms from customer's point and also from the uh, uh, industry perspective. So in 2000, uh, 2009, 2.3 was a COP and there was no star labeling program. And from 2010 to uh, 18, every two years, the program has been getting upgraded. So if you, roughly you can say uh, 0.2 uh, ISCR or COP has been incremented. Uh, though between 2014 and 2018 and fixed speed it didn't change but we can see here the jump was 0.4 so you can take average 0.2 is happening the the inverter program was introduced uh, in uh, july 2016 and in 2018 uh, a common table was uh, established for inverter and fixed speed the next table is more or less planned uh, and the numbers are are fixed uh, as uh, <coughs> As uh, you know, told by Samir, we are working on how to when to implement that, considering the present COVID situation. Next slide, please. So, what are the next steps now? The technology adopted is at par with the developed countries. We don't feel that the technology is anywhere inferior. All the uh, all the known technologies are adopted with comfort for all, stated in ICAP, that is India Cooling Action Plan. The energy labeling program should be crafted with 10 years perspective. The ICAP also gives midterm five years, which is up to 22, 23. Uh, uh, sorry, short term. Median term is 10 years up to 28, and long term is up to 38. So we should align the program uh, uh, for next 10 years. Important with now 10 years program uh, and 10 years of experience, a customer survey should be conducted uh, to get user feedback. Uh, on how, what they feel, how they use it, what are the selection criteria, how much time they use, uh, are they comfortable with the program, are they comfortable with the technology, all these points uh, a survey will help us to uh, take the next steps. Reach at, uh, increasing the energy efficiency should be carefully done by keeping the balance between affordability and energy efficiency and should not allow the weighted average efficiency of products sold to reduce and a window air conditioner to go up. We should, we know today that there is a significant gap between uh, of, the, of the price of window air conditioner and a split air conditioner, say which is the highest selling is three star split air conditioner. Uh, and we also know that window air conditioner has got a different table uh, and uh, it should not happen that if we increase the efficiency and it becomes affordability becomes an issue, then the customers may go from a three star to a two star, or there will be a shift from split air conditioning to a window air conditioning. That will that will defeat the purpose of the uh, uh, promoting uh, uh, of energy efficiency. So we should have a proper gap affordability. We definitely know uh, is an issue to be studied in detail as well as. Uh, uh, we should uh, uh, we should address it so that the uh, if energy efficiency at a weighted average level doesn't get affected. Next slide, please. Uh, this is continued. Considering that all known technologies are adopted, the upgradation interval we feel as an industry should be five years. To the best of our knowledge, US and few other developed countries follow longer intervals. And this is based on what are the next technologies available, what is the sale that is happening, what are the patterns that are there. Uh, I don't know, but I, am, I feel uh, that they must be doing certain surveys. This period will help also, importantly, because every two years we're changing, this period will also help uh, to uh, optimize the design cost. 
and also optimize the supply chain, which will help us in uh, bringing down the cost of manufacturing or the cost of the manufactured product and the benefits can be passed on to the customers. Investment is also done required to the tune of 50 million for the industry, 50 million dollar for each changeover and uh, the industry feels that we should get sufficient time to recover that before the next changeover. We, in the end, incentives should be given to promote high energy efficiency products. We know few countries have adopted this, uh, this, this initiative and has helped. Next slide, please. That's my presentation. And over to you, Eric. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bambure, for such an informative uh, presentation. Um, we are at the hour on this webinar. However, we have uh, 15 minutes for a uh, question and answer uh, session. So uh, please do enter your uh, inquiries in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and we'll take up as many of them as, uh, as we possibly can. Uh, one of the uh, first inquiries uh, was uh, directed towards uh, Samir. Uh, Samir, the question is uh, whether BEE is going to is planning to incorporate other types of fans into uh, the labeling programs. So beyond ceiling fans, we're talking about table and, and pedestal fans. Uh, and if so, how would that uh, uh, proceed to be made mandatory? And would there be any support for smaller manufacturers? Sorry, Eric, I lost you somewhere in between. That's why I turned off my video. Uh, uh, can you repeat this question? As, I certainly uh, can. Yes, absolutely. So the question is, re is regarding other types of fans beyond ceiling fans and the regulation and labeling of said fans. So for example, table and, and pedestal fans, will those be incorporated into BEE's labeling program? Um, and if so, will, uh, will BEE have any uh, support to smaller manufacturers in India? Uh, when other kinds of fans will definitely be brought under the ambit of uh, standards and labeling in the years ahead, but presently, uh, as such, uh, a study has to be carried out to find out uh, what kind of uh, energy saving potentials uh, this particular segment will uh, offer. Uh, we had uh, initially planned to bring and capture this uh, particular segment under the standards and labeling program uh, while we were looking at uh, ratcheting up or uh, enhancing the standards for ceiling fans. But uh, at that uh, particular time, we didn't have a report readily available with us. Uh, however, having said that, and thereafter this COVID uh, outbreak actually never allowed us to uh, undertake a survey. Uh, however, uh, we will definitely uh, like to look at this segment once we are in know of uh, what kind of energy savings uh, this particular segment uh, shall offer. And uh, we will surely um, uh, develop a scheme, a voluntary scheme for uh, this segment as well. Uh, insofar support for small and medium enterprises is concerned, um, we already for, uh, for uh, small and medium enterprises in the country, we already have a relaxation, monetary relaxation that we provide to the small and medium enterprises uh, at the time of uh, seeking a registration under our program. Uh, in terms of the registration fee that uh, the small and medium enterprises are supposed to pay, it is about one fourth of the fee that uh, a normal, uh, a bigger manufacturer or a more established manufacturer uh, has to pay to the bureau. Uh, secondly, uh, one major impediment that I foresee apart from the potential that this segment has to offer us uh, is whether uh, the standards, the Indian standards available are updated, uh, are in sync. Uh, and are in sync with the technologies uh, that are available uh, in this segment. And, uh, and most importantly, whether testing facilities are available in the country. So uh, then this makes it important for me as a policy regulator uh, to look into first 
uh, into how the lab or the testing capacities can be built. Once we are um, having all these things, um, we will be proceeding and maybe in another year or so you will uh, find that this segment too uh, finds a place uh, under the SNL scheme. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, response, uh, Samir. Uh, next question is uh, for uh, Mr. Bamburi. Mr. Bamburi, uh, in your presentation, you uh, noted that 75% uh, of uh, room AC sales are of the three-star models. And uh, the question uh, that, that I have and that others have is how, uh, how best to, um, what are, the, what are the issues to getting Indian consumers to move up the scale towards uh, five-star ACs? Is it affordability? And if it is affordability, um, how, can that be, uh, how can that be properly dealt with so that you can move up the line of efficiency from what is uh, typically seen as the sweet spot of the three-star towards more, uh, more efficient uh, ACs? So so there are two, three aspects, few of them I did explain in my presentation, but I'm just repeating. Uh, first is, uh, you know, the supply chain and the design optimization has to get established. And uh, presently what is happening is uh, we launch a product and within one year's time, uh, we start working for the next launch because the table is more or less changing every two years. So the, uh, we, we have got only hardly a time of a one year. Uh, for the uh, for the design team, R and D team, and then uh, simultaneously we start working with the uh, uh, vendor development and the supply chain team to optimize the cost. Now the bigger problem is uh, with this: are we in real position to optimize the cost? My own experience, because I worked for nearly twenty years in R and D, is that time is slightly insufficient and. So the, uh, we are chasing always a target and our sub vendors are chasing the target, be it a compressor manufacturer, motor manufacturer, fan manufacturer, everybody. We feel that uh, if, the, if the costs come down, then uh, the affordability issue will be definitely be uh, uh, resolved. This is one point as, the second point is, uh, the, though we have taken approximately 1600 hours of use of our air conditioners, uh, the penetration level is somewhere about, as our estimate, about 6 to 8 percent. Now, the summer in India is very, very short because of the monsoons coming. The summer starts in south of India somewhere in March end and ends in south India by May end. So you've got every March, April, May, three months. Same thing happens in the north. It starts somewhere in April or April, mid of April and goes through. So three hour, three uh, months is the only period which uh, air conditioners is used. Unlike what we as we're taken in standards as 1600 hours, which were taken from mid of March to mid of September is the total time. Now we should do a survey and get a feedback from customer that the increased capital cost what he's investing, is it paying him back because he's using for two months, three months, four months like this. So that is some one missing point which we have not understood. The, the other important point which is there is the establishing of manufacturing facilities uh, within the country so that uh, the demand and suppliers can be met and the overall cost can be brought down. Uh, Government of India is taking certain steps uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to start uh, uh, you know, promoting manufacturing of key components in India. We also feel that with the volume, you know, the earlier the, uh, it was only 2.1 million, now it has gone to 7, 7 million plus. So this will help. Uh, but definitely uh, affordability is, uh, is a problem uh, as per the industry thoughts. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Um, back to you, Samir. There's uh, several questions regarding chillers. Um, so one question was regarding uh, when, if and when uh, labeling for chillers would be mandatory. Uh, another inquiry about whether um, the labeling program for chillers would be merged with the PAT-6 scheme 
uh, and implemented in, in with chillers that are already established in commercial buildings or only chillers to be manufactured, new chillers. So that's the inquiry on chillers to you, sir. Thank you, Eric. Uh, as far as the chiller star labeling program is concerned, we, as I mentioned in my talk also, uh, we wanted to transition this program to a mandatory phase by this year end. So uh, we ideally would have uh, been very pleased to have this uh, program uh, in the mandatory regime uh, from 1st of January 2021. Uh, however, uh, the COVID uh, problem has uh, prevented us from doing so. Uh, having said that, uh, it's not long that uh, uh, probably um, the consumer will have to wait uh, to see this under the mandatory regime. Uh, we will definitely bring this under the mandatory regime by the uh, year, uh, by the end of the year 2021. So you might see this product in the mandatory regime by 1st of January uh, 2022. Uh, that's uh, the answer uh, for the first query. Uh, I, uh, can you just repeat the second one for me? The, the inquiry was regarding the uh, PAT-6 scheme and whether uh, the, the question was regarding existing uh, chillers and new chillers. Uh, as far as the PAT scheme is concerned, having worked in the scheme for a considerable time, uh, what little I know, uh, because I've not been a part of this scheme over the past three years now, uh, uh, commercial buildings per se have been uh, brought under the ambit of uh, uh, part three, uh, part, this uh, part six. However, in uh, terms of the scheme, uh, energy reduction target is generally assigned to the overall building, and there is no target as such assigned to the appliance like a chiller that is there uh, installed within a commercial building. So, uh, I don't think uh, there is uh, any way. Uh, that uh, the um, chiller program per se, SNL chiller program uh, will be notified or brought under PAT 6, though uh, by the virtue of uh, the energy conservation building codes that we have in our country, uh, by virtue of uh, these codes being notified by the states, uh, probably yes, uh, the standards and labeling um, specifications for uh, chillers uh, might get notified as well. So uh, it will not happen uh, um, according to me because of PAT, but it will happen when the state governments mend, uh, make the energy conservation building codes mandatory. Uh, because uh, the implementation of the energy conservation building codes is something that the states have to deal with. They have, to, they have the mandate to uh, make the building codes uh, mandatory to uh, uh, to suit their uh, climatic requirements, and this is uh, accordingly going to happen only once the ECBC uh, codes are notified uh, by the states as per their requirements. PAT per se will not impact chillers uh, or their performance. So that's the reply to the second question. What about uh, the third one? Uh, I think we'll, we'll pause it there. There's another uh, inquiry, which uh, I think is highly relevant um, that I wanted to pose uh, both to you, Samir, and to Mr. Bamburi. Um, we know that uh, some private power uh, distribution companies are doing demand side uh, energy efficiency programs in Delhi and Mumbai around uh, five-star rated products. Uh, are there any initiatives uh, either under BEE or um, uh, at the federal or state level to drive similar uh, programs and schemes in other states. Um, this is a model that uh, through utilities has been uh, quite effective in the United States. So uh, I thought that was a relevant inquiry and I'll open it up to, to both of you to respond. So Samir, you can please go ahead first then I'll, I'll give uh, my view. Uh, the most of the utilities uh, like uh, BSES uh, in uh, Delhi, the Yamna Power, it's a, it's a distribution company, uh, electricity distribution company. And uh, this has recently, uh, in fact, uh, about two days back, it has launched a, 
uh, a similar program uh, for uh, uh, replacement of non-star labeled uh, air conditioners with five star labeled high air energy efficiency uh, split air conditioners as well as window air conditioners. Now uh, this uh, initiative of the DESCOM is largely supported by the government of uh, the NCT of Delhi. So uh, the, the state government uh, has a backing, the regulator has the backing of this program and this is essentially a network driven DSM, demand side management initiative. So uh, this is being essentially uh, promoted by the government itself. However, it is being implemented by the BSES. Uh, before this, EESL has also tried to uh, do its bit uh, by, by um, replacing uh, existing air conditioners with uh, super energy efficient air conditioners or which are better than the B5 star rated air conditioners which have an IC rating of uh, uh, in excess of 5 of 4.5 uh, but uh, presently um, uh, I, I cannot make a statement as to whether that program has taken off well or not because uh, of this uh, COVID uh, situation which has uh, in fact impacted most of our schemes very adversely but uh, in the Indian scenario I think uh, 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 this is one, perhaps the only successful business model uh, uh, if uh, government has to drive uh, the demand side management programs it has to be bulk procurement and uh, replacement scaling down the upfront cost of the air conditioners uh, because private industries or the private sector per se uh, requires a huge investment to make in this and therefore uh, the models for uh, a private player the business models for the private players to do it all by themselves uh, shall be uh, something very different i don't think it has uh, been done in india uh, entirely by a private uh, agency anywhere all the programs the demand side programs uh, in India have majorly been uh, uh, have been supported by the government uh, somewhere or the other uh, as is in the case of uh, AC replacement as well. So, so my views uh, are, uh, are, are I would like to give my views. One is uh, there are two three scenarios which you have to see. We have seen and we observed that about 30 percent of the efficiency or weighted average efficiency has gone up. Uh, we industry feels that there is a sizable number of air conditioners that are already pre-labeling program are running both in private sector, in government and many other things and many other places where they like, like uh, Bakri said in banks that are there, they are in ATM. So many places the air conditioners are running. So uh, uh, and if they are replaced by the new air conditioner, be it five star or Samir said there was EESL, which was, we can call it uh, for namesake, a super five star. Uh, they will definitely give you energy efficiency savings. So uh, the crafting of the program has to be done that it becomes attractive for the, uh, for the end users. Uh, some initiatives have been taken by private consumers, uh, a large consumers, uh, where they are committed to uh, certain savings uh, and are committed certain savings in energy efficient energy demand whereby they whereby they you know like they will uh, require this uh, they, they have taken a phase program whereby they uh, step by step they go on replacing the air conditioner we have seen some movement happening however we should uh, re really look into the uh, uh, how the as I said earlier, we should have proper feedback, uh, get more uh, stakeholders uh, on the table, understand what is workable, and then I'm sure that uh, the, the the program can be put in uh, action. Thank you very much, uh, Samir and Mr. Bambure, for your responses to that uh, question. Um, and per, given the time, uh, perhaps this might be the last question, but uh, several inquiries re, uh, regarding the deferral of the, the mandatory labeling program. Um, so if you could address the reasoning behind the deferral of the mandatory labeling program, for example, uh, ceiling fans, um, and the impact uh, of that 
of that delay, um, that would be uh, that would be welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, the reason I've already uh, explained, uh, Eric, uh, the reason, primary reason has been the outbreak of uh, COVID. Uh, and uh, what exactly is happening is uh, most of our uh, fan industries, uh, the, the manufacturers, the ceiling fan manufacturers in our country, uh, they are ordering uh, their fans, the magnets and the VLDC motors, the controls, they are being sourced from, all this material is being sourced from uh, China. And uh, the orders are typically placed uh, somewhere in November, October and November uh, for uh, sales in the, uh, in the next year, in the following year. So uh, what had happened, the industry approached us and told us that uh, since uh, most of our uh, sales are almost now they have gone down because people are uh, not willing to purchase during the COVID due to whatever apprehensions that uh, or whatever reasons they are having um, uh, people uh, or the customer is not buying ceiling fans and uh, so the finished good inventory as well as the raw material inventory is stuck up at various points in the supply chain and uh, they are unable to sell these uh, uh, goods uh, due to poor demand and there is a liquidity crunch uh, that uh, the industry is uh, faced with. Uh, the primary reason for deferment has been our uh, in immense dependence on imports from China. Uh, that's one of the primary reason and uh, one of the reasons, one of the solutions that uh, recommendations that uh, the government has actually given is to increase the local content uh, in the ceiling fans as well as uh, the air conditioners so that uh, uh, the country doesn't uh, fall into uh, this trap any further. As far as the assessment of uh, what would be the impact of deferring this uh, labeling, star labeling for uh, ceiling fans for uh, more than uh, one and a half years, uh, we are yet to make any assessments uh, in this regard. Uh, however, since the scheme is voluntary, uh, we are uh, capturing only about uh, th 33 lakh sales of ceiling fans at the moment out of the total market, estimated market of about five crores for the ceiling fans. So uh, I, I, I uh, am not very sure what kind of impact would be there, but uh, from the SNL perspective, it will not be very substantial because presently we are not covering the entire market. However, uh, once the market, be, uh, once, once the scheme becomes mandatory, we will be able to capture the entire market. but. Uh, there are issues uh, per se. Uh, COVID is not the only issue. Testing uh, of uh, ceiling fans is also an issue. Uh, 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 we have limited capacities to test the ceiling fans at the moment in the country. Uh, only limited number of testing labs in the country for ceiling fans. And therefore, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we expect that uh, within the next one and a half years, now that a clear signal has been sent to the manufacturers that we will bring this under the mandatory star labeling ambit, uh, the testing facilities are going to come up as the demand for testing increases. Uh, so, uh, and also um, uh, you will see that uh, this notification is coming out uh, in another maybe two months or by September, we will notify this so that uh, the message is loud and clear to the manufacturers that uh, we are going to transition. We will transition this scheme to the mandatory phase. Uh, the papers are already ready with us. As I mentioned that uh, we had to notify this on 1st of July 20 itself. Uh, but we will ensure that uh, the notification comes out this year itself, even if uh, the mandatory phase was to uh, be made applicable from 1st of January 2022. So that will send a very clear message and will definitely help in creation of testing facilities also. Thank you very much uh, for that detailed um, response, Samir. I, I believe we have time for one more question, and I do want to. Um, uh, I, I do want to uh, take this one from uh, an international uh, participant. So 
Uh, India uh, started the program and has a well-established program of starting uh, with voluntary labeling uh, and then transitioning uh, some products to mandatory. The question is, how long does it usually take for the implementation of the labeling program uh, to transition from the voluntary to the mandatory? And what are the factors that are considered for this transition? Eric, as I mentioned uh, uh, in my reply to the previous question, uh, there are certain factors. Uh, there are in fact, uh, to me, there are two important factors. Uh, first of all, uh, there should be enough testing facilities available and uh, credible testing, which can uh, verify the compliance of the product. The, we should not get uh, variable results while testing the same product in two, three different labs. Uh, that is the first uh, thing that uh, a very reliable testing infrastructure has to be in place. Uh, typically, it takes around uh, two to three years to have this uh, and to transition from a voluntary uh, uh, program stage into a mandatory program stage. We typically uh, were revising the standards every two years uh, for uh, matured markets like uh, that of air conditioners. But in case of like ceiling fans, uh, we still lack testing facilities. Even in case of chillers uh, or, or commercial uh, refrigeration uh, equipment like uh, deep freezers, we don't have testing facilities, limited testing facilities, though the manufacturers do have uh, uh, testing facilities available in-house, but independent testing facilities are largely limited. So first of uh, all, uh, till the, we need to provide time for uh, testing facilities to come up. Secondly, uh, manufacturers from the manufacturer's point of view, there is a particular investment that the manufacturers are making into developing their supply chains and uh, manufacturing uh, uh, a particular uh, uh, appliance that complies with a particular uh, standard. Uh, it would be definitely, uh, it, 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 this is a factor that needs to be taken into consideration that uh, manufacturers should not be hard pressed. They should be able to uh, get their break evens uh, before uh, we are actually uh, we together. It's a it, it, everything is done in consensus. Most of the times, industry has to be uh, on board as well. So till the time, a little time has to be given till uh, by when they are able to the manufacturers are able to get their uh, paybacks or. Uh, uh, so these, according to me, are two important factors. Uh, third one uh, definitely is a pressing demand. Uh, like in case of ceiling fans, there was a pressing demand from uh, various uh, ministries as well as uh, from uh, various departments of the government of India that since the market is immense and uh, there is a rapid inefficiency or huge inefficiencies that are visible in the existing stocks of ceiling fans, uh, which even consume 100 watts, uh, uh, up to 100 watts. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, we had to uh, go ahead and uh, make this product uh, mandatory within a year of receiving such requests from the government departments. But unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, the industry was not prepared and uh, standards and labeling process as it is uh, always done in consensus in, and consent, uh, it, it is a mutual cooperative process. So, it cannot be done in isolation with the without the industry. So uh, industry is a part and parcel of this program and therefore testing for me and the uh, acceptance of the industry is very important before we transition into the mandatory phase. So Eric, I will add a few things. The Indian labeling program has succeeded because all stakeholders work together. Uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency and the industry work together. We will have generally about four to five rounds of meeting based on testing data and that becomes the basis. So usually, as you said about it takes about uh, a program to be formed, it, about, it takes about uh, two years uh, and then uh, a voluntary period is given about one and a half to two years. Uh, why that is, why voluntary period is required is as uh, the industry has to make investment in R&D, industry has to make investment in laboratories and uh, industry has to make investment in the manpower. Uh, there is one more factor which is always considered this time is given is uh, the industry composition is uh, there is a local industry, 
uh, as well as there are MNCs in any most of the market, larger markets. And uh, there is a technology gap or the competency gap, whatever you say, but there's generally a technology gap because MNCs have got the experience of worldwide. And this period also gives that uh, a time for the local industry to absorb the technology and have a fair uh, playing ground when the laboring program comes. And uh, so there are two, three factors which uh, uh, define uh, what is the voluntary period. And of course, it is, as, is, as Samir said, it is a consensus of industry, uh, laboratories, uh, uh, standards. At times, we have to prepare standards, which are, uh, which are the reference standards for uh, the measurement and testing uh, and the regulators together. So these are the four entities as a stakeholders. Of course, customers are also there. Thank you very much, uh, Samir and uh, Mr. Bambure. And I would uh, simply like to thank our, our two panelists for their excellent presentations and uh, responses to inquiries. Um, Despite the fact that we are now, we have exceeded uh, 90 minutes for this virtual event, we had uh, over 90 participants remain uh, a half hour uh, past the allotted time, uh, which I think just indicates uh, the interest and engagement uh, in, uh, in this key topic. So uh, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, look out for a follow-up email that will include all the relevant materials, presentations from the event. Uh, please uh, follow CLASP on social media, sign up for our newsletters, uh, uh, and participate in our uh, ongoing series of virtual events. Uh, you can check out class.ngo for details, and you will be directed to a, a post-webinar survey following this event, so please be sure to provide us with our feedback so that we can improve them going forward. I'd like to thank everyone um, for your participation on this uh, most interesting event. Take care, be well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you to the speaker. And thanks, Eric, thank for you all. Thank you, Samisa, for joining. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. It was great pleasure working with you. Same here, sir. Same here, sir. We still work together, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> today's program. Well done. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everybody. Pleasure.